What is up, my chemistry people? Today, we're gonna to work through two quick problems about actual yield, theoretical yield, and percent yield, and how they're all tied together. If you take a quick look at problem one, it says methanol can be produced through the reaction of CO, carbon monoxide, and hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. Boom, there's our reaction. Boom, it's already balanced. My life is awesome. If 75 grams of CO reacts to produce 68.4 grams of CH3OH. What is the percent yield of CH3OH? Okay, so to solve this problem, we need to recognize that percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. Now, we already know the actual yield. We're told that we produce 68.4 grams of methanol, but we need to know theoretically how much methanol should we have made? We know that we made 68.4 grams, but, but what in theory should be the amount of methanol that we make when we start with 75 grams of CO? So anytime you're looking for theoretical yield, it's simply a stoichiometry calculation. This is like in a perfect world. And for chemistry, a perfect world is on pen and paper. We don't have to worry about leaving some of our reactants behind in a reactant vessel. We just wanna know Theoretically, if everything works perfectly, in a perfect world, how much methanol should we make? So if, in a perfect world, I had 75.0 grams of carbon monoxide, I wanna know how many grams of CH3OH in a perfect world I should get. Well, I set up my first conversion factor by putting grams of carbon monoxide in the denominator. Again, I want that unit to cancel out. And I'm gonna go to moles of carbon monoxide. Remember, when I'm comparing two things in a chemical equation, it relates amounts in moles. So if you don't know moles, convert to moles first. Now, if I stopped here, I would solve for moles of carbon monoxide, which although not what I'm looking for, is the first step that I need to take. And anytime that it's moles to grams, moles is always one, and grams comes from the periodic table. Don't forget, the periodic table is always the mass in grams in one mole of your substance. So for carbon monoxide, I'm just gonna estimate, this is about 12 grams, this is about 16 grams, which means that the molar mass of carbon monoxide is about 28 grams per mole. So if I plug that into my conversion factor, again, if I stop right here, ask yourself, do I have less than one mole of carbon monoxide, exactly one mole of carbon monoxide, or more than one mole of carbon monoxide? This 75 grams is greater than the 28 gram molar mass of carbon monoxide. So I must have more than one mole of carbon monoxide. If I put that in my calculator, we're gonna go 75.0 times one. Remember you always multiply across the top and then divide by the number in the denominator, divided by 28. So if I stopped right here, I would have about 2.68 or about two and two thirds mole of carbon monoxide. However, we're not asked for moles of carbon monoxide, we're asked for grams of CH3OH, so I need to go again. This time, I'm gonna put moles of carbon monoxide in the denominator so that it cancels out, and I can compare now to moles of anything else in the equation. But because I'm looking for methanol, I'm gonna compare it to methanol. This time, my units of moles of carbon monoxide will cancel out. Anytime it's moles to moles, I look at the balanced chemical equation. I recognize that it's a one to one relationship. So if I take my 2.68 moles of carbon monoxide and I think to myself, how many moles of CH3OH should I make? Well, times one divided by one. The number of moles is gonna be the same. Again, it's a one to one ratio. So I end up with 2.68 moles of methanol. And again, here's why dimensional analysis is so important. Many of you think to yourself, Mr. Boylan, why do I have to multiply by one and divide by one? It's just gonna give me the same answer. Truth! However, what happens here is we cancel out our units that we do not want. Don't want you, Molcio! So it's an important conversion factor to include. The last thing we need to do is convert from moles of CH3OH to grams of CH3OH. Again, anytime we're looking for a gram to mole relationship, we're gonna go to the periodic table. I'm now looking for the molar mass of CH3OH. This is about 12 grams. This is about three grams. This is about 16 grams. And this is about one gram. 
So in my noggin, I add these together. 15 plus 16 is 31 plus one, about 32 grams per mole. So I plug that into my last conversion factor here. Notice the units of moles methanol cancel out and I'm left with grams of methanol. I take my 2.68 moles, I multiply it by 32 and then divide by one. Again, that causes the units to cancel out. Which means that in theory, perfect world, if we were perfect like me, we would have gotten 85.7 grams of methanol. Now we're not done. This is just theoretically how much we should have gotten. So in theory, we should have gotten 85.7 grams. And we're told that we only made 68.4. So clearly we're not at 100%. We didn't make as much as we should have made in theory. Not a problem. All we have to do is report what our percent yield is. It's simply a matter of taking our actual of 68.4, dividing it by our theoretical of 85.7, and multiplying by 100. When we do this, we get a percent yield of approximately 79.8%. Again, I'm gonna box my final answer in. It's really important that you are comfortable with dimensional analysis. On the free response section, failure to show dimensional analysis will mean you get zero points, even if you end up with the correct answer. So show your work through dimensional analysis, make sure you include units at each step, and then clearly mark your final answer.